Hi, my name's Tony Chapman. I'm the host of Chatter That Matters. In this age of noise, I cut through the chaos and confusion to focus on what matters most to your life and your livelihood. And on this episode, I chat with... My next guest is someone I met many years ago. I fell immediately in love with her brain, her passion, this incredible appetite for life, and she loves fashion. We both know who I'm talking about. Jeannie Becker, who was part of last season and has graciously agreed to come back on. Jeannie, thank you so much for being part of Chatter That Matters. Oh, a thrill to be here, Tony, always. I wanted to bring you this story about this immigrant family coming to Canada and setting up shop because you reminded me that your dad started off that way. He had a small factory. Absolutely. My parents immigrated uh, here in 1948, and my dad started a small little slipper factory in the basement of our downtown Toronto home in 1952. My dad worked at that business seven days a week, 12 hours a day for decades. It must make me cry when I think of how hard he worked, and I used to see him work that hard. And it, he just scrimped and saved to put a roof over our heads. I mean, it was never a big money maker, but somehow he managed to to keep it all afloat. Um, it was really a, a tough time too, because the Japanese were creating all these products to compete with what he was doing and certainly undercutting uh, his prices. So he made you know a couple of pennies a pair of slippers. These were like funny novelty plush slippers for ladies and children. It, it killed me kind of in, in some ways as I grew older and understood the nature of the business and what he was up against and how hard he worked. He might have had maybe about 15 people working at the factory. You know, it was his life and he loved being a boss and he loved being in control. And But then, you know, when he hit, you know, 70, he sort of got very ill and he just couldn't carry the business on anymore. And he just sold it for a song to somebody else. And end of an era. What a beautiful story and really, really defines a lot of what Canada is all about. So you must have a lot of heart for Kathy and, and her story because it's yet another tale of immigrants coming to Canada. Mm-hmm. Her dad worked three jobs, worked himself to a bone and they scraped enough money with his brother and sister and they opened up a small factory and everything went into that. And uh, I'm curious to how you felt as a young child. You talked about how, thinking back now, how hard he worked. Did you go to, ever go to the factory and watch him oh. do it? Oh, all the time, yeah. I mean, well, every Saturday afternoon after my piano lessons at the Royal Conservatory, um, that was the big treat to go down to my dad's factory and meet all the fabulous people that worked there. And at that time, he had all these Italian immigrants working for him, just a great crew of people. I absolutely loved them. And we, we would hear stories about them incessantly, of course. They became our extended family, in a sense. And then my mom and I would have homework to do because he would uh, send these labels home with us. My mom would sit there with a little, you know, portable typewriter. He would like glue them onto the boxes of slippers that he sent all across the country. And I was like, wow, we're sending slippers to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. I mean, from, from my little suburban, you know, bedroom, I was just fantasizing about this great country out there that my dad was servicing with his slippers. <laughs> like you fell in love with fashion in your whole life. Mm. Uh, Going forward, do you think a lot of it had to do with just being part of that world as a young child? My dad worked in the the garment district of Toronto, of course. So he took us to all these factory showrooms. He had befriended the owners of these various factories. For me, it was like, wow, I've got a chance to really, you know, shop these rails and find the most fabulous things and get them at deep discounts. So that definitely, definitely helped excite me about uh, fashion and my mom of course then started making all our clothes we would look through the pages of all the glossy fashion magazines and she would uh, you know see something that you know that she thought she could maybe make and we would go to Stitsky's and buy the fabric and she made me clothes so yeah I, I feel like I really grew up in the business I totally can relate to everything that Kathy is passionate about to everything that must frustrate Kathy about the business because it's such a tough business but it is a business that you've got to have a huge passion for because in this country it's not a huge money-making business i mean there have been some canadian brands that have really just flown i mean you look at uh, canada goose of course you know what a great success story even though kathy is behind a product that is so classy in my mind because it's made in this country it's made with love it's got so much going for it 
Yet, how do you really stand out from all that noise that's around you, especially when you're making garments that are classic? You know, you've got to differentiate yourself. Let's say they could afford someone like Jeannie Becker, who has been at the epicenter of fashion for decades. What would you advise Kathy do to, to find something that stood for something and stood out so that people would go, it might not be the next new thing on the rack, mm -hmm. but that's something I want in my wardrobe. Entering the stage, and we've already entered it because of the pandemic, we were really longing for these comfy, relaxed pieces, pieces that you just feel embraced by. This company, Redwood, they have the fabrications to do it. They, they know how to do the cuts. They know how to make garments that really fit well. Why not team up with, okay, this is just a crazy idea, a fashion school. Why not team up with Ryerson and do a program where you take some of their top fashion design students and give them the task of, you know, each one designs a piece with a bit of an edge to it. A capsule collection of pieces that are a little more fashion forward, that still maintain a, a certain sense of classicism to them, but have details in them that are just going to pop, that are going to be media worthy. Don't get locked into that total image of yourself as a company that's just going to do these classics. Have a little more fun with it. Have fun with, with graphics. It can be something even that simple. A hoodie that's just sort of gray hoodie with a zipper, okay, that's fine. But if it said something on it, something that meaningful, some kind of maybe socio-political message, wow, wouldn't that be great? It wouldn't be expensive to do. It would just make the product a little more appealing, a little more newsworthy, bringing attention to the whole Redwood Classics brand in general. Janie, this is unbelievable uh, gift that you're giving to Kathy. I was funny enough, because I just, I thought the word classic was almost spiritually taking her down this path of boring. And you're saying Redwood, I'm thinking, God, it should be Pinkwood and Greenwood and Hillwood. <laughs> So I want to ask you, any final thoughts for Kathy? You know, it all depends on how big you want to dream, but I think the sky really is the limit for Kathy if she remains focused on maintaining all the wonderful things that Redwood already represents, but just opening a little bit of a window and letting some fresh air in and seeing how she can reimagine the brand to be even more than it already is. Do you think your dad's looking down at her with a big smile saying, keep that fight up because we need that? <laughs> you know, he'd really been through it all and uh, his, his whole motto was, don't be afraid and never give up. And that's what I'd like to tell Kathy. Jeannie, he must have been so proud of you for what you've accomplished in Canadian media. Nothing made me more proud than going around the world and hearing that fashion television music, seeing you come on and going, that's a Canadian star with panache showing her stuff all over the world. You're just such a wonder and you, you have more enthusiasm and passion today than you did five years ago. And you exhausted me then and you continue to exhaust me <laughs> with happiness. Thanks so much.